Hi guys, uh, my name is Kwame. Wow, oh. you started with a really big sigh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey guys, uh, welcome to my channel. My name is Kwame. This is It's Okay. And um, I usually vlog about productivity and my freelance journey and other things. And every now and then, since the very latter part of last year, you know, we do these conversations. So Elaine and I, do these conversations where we sit down and talk about the things or experiences that we go through. And we are in by no means saying that our relationship is uh, a mortal relationship or a perfect one. It's just that for us, when we do this, the thing we're doing right now and share our experiences, it also helps us. It actually helps us more because then we're able to talk about these things and know how far we've come with all the things that we've been through and been able to um, make sense of things yeah so today's episode is inspired by elaine she's the producer of this episode <laughs> um the topic and the things she has written down so she's going to go through them and then we're going to have a little banter about um long distance relationships yes yeah um because so my name is elaine hello <laughs> <laughs> Uh, before we were together in Ghana, we did a long time of long distance. I think all in all it was two years. Yeah. And the longest that we haven't seen each other is nine months, I believe. Yeah, and we had to bridge. Yeah. And we actually learned a lot along the way. Um, and we thought it would be useful to share also because of the current pandemic. And maybe people are forced to be long distance now and hopefully you can get a, some nuggets of wisdom or something to apply or try out or not it's also or fine. not <laughs> it's also fine yeah. <laughs> or just make you make you laugh anything you can get from it so um yes long distance everybody always said like oh it's so difficult and it is, it is very difficult yeah but i'm also grateful for the things that it taught us um, so I got thinking about why it worked for us or yes, why it actually worked out. And I think I came to two elements. So one is commitment and two is communication. communication. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can actually refer to your notes, right? Yes, I have my notebook. <laughs> I'm, I'm not yet so spontaneous as Kwame with uh, what to say. I'm but, not very spontaneous either. But you're more fluent front of the camera. But yeah. let's not go into that. Yeah. So what it taught me is that it taught me commitment because you're doing long distance. You will definitely know whether it's worth it to build with this person or not, because it's quite difficult to include a person in your life when he or she is not physically there. Yeah. And literally living in a different world. I mean, Ghana and Netherlands is a different world. So how do you, you know, include somebody in that? Um, I think you have to commit to explore exactly and really commit to the person because you cannot if you live in the same city you can see oh let's see where this goes yeah. you maybe hang out you go to the movies you see each other once in a while you have the time yeah. to explore physically and see how you feel around each other but that's more difficult to bridge when you're not in the same place in the same place um, so you, mentally you have to psych yourself up to, to decide that you are committing to this, to see where yes. it goes and you want to do it. Yes. Okay. And because it's difficult, you will know, you won't go for it if it's a fling. Exactly. Because okay. you will know that it's worth to do it. So the commitment part is very, for me, it was very intentional. Like I'm committing to this person and I know it's worth it. Okay. Um, even though it's difficult. So that keeps it balanced. And what I'm also very grateful for, which we learned the hard way, is that... We're it, still learning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is that it taught us communication. So for us, we did a lot of phone calls. I don't know why we didn't video call a lot, but we didn't do that so much. So we did phone calls. You did a lot of phone calls on WhatsApp. Yes. And it's difficult to hear. You can only hear the person. So it's difficult to hear what's going on. So in order to make it work, the other person also needs to be open and vulnerable in order to really share your life. So I think that it taught us communication because we learned how to ask questions, how to, yeah. you know, really get to the bottom of things, even though you're not 
there to put some arm around some person or hug or anything yeah. like that. And I have to chip in that um, with communication, especially with WhatsApp and phone calls, we also learn the hard way that it's better to actually have a phone call about the important things or things that you may be confused about because WhatsApp or text messaging tends to yeah. have different meanings depending on the mood you're in or whatever it is or what you, what you think the person is trying to say. Some messages can come across as yeah. entirely different things and then you get angry and you don't communicate. I, for one, you know, when I'm angry, I retract. Mm -hmm. So reading a message and getting angry and not knowing exactly what your partner was trying to say will almost always end in a fight or argument. Yeah. So if you, if you don't know exactly what the person means, you can ask, can, can we call about this? Because I'm not sure exactly what you mean. And then you can be clear that the person's message wasn't yeah. intended to be what it was. Yeah, I, I really believe we had the most miscommunication through WhatsApp. Yeah. So you read and then suddenly it triggers something. Yeah. You have to call or hear the voice, hear the intention, because over WhatsApp you cannot hear somebody's intention or meaning. Yeah. I think that's really true, yeah. yeah. So that was so our why why it worked was definitely commitment and communication. Yeah. Um and I also thought about how we made it work, so I wrote down a few things. <laughs> and it comes down to again two C's compromise and creativity so right now we have four c's there's committing and making sure you fine-tune your communication properly and then now how to actually after you've committed and communicated to keep it together yeah okay and that you do to crump uh, compromise and creativity <laughs> <laughs> bear with us so um how we made it work we did a lot of things together even though we were not physically together for example we well now it's difficult with covid but uh we went to the cinema so we went to the same movie on the same day yeah. when a movie comes out and it's also released in the netherlands or is worldwide thankfully yes. silver bed cinemas was working so we would go and watch the same film yeah and then we would it's weird maybe to go alone to the cinema but it felt nice to know that Kwame was also in the in cinema, the cinema. At the same time at the, around the same, same time, time yeah. and then we decided on a time to call and you know discuss the movie yeah. which felt still like a date so yes, it, yes we made that Together work apart. yes yeah. and i think it's what we also did uh for example when i discovered a podcast uh, i think it was passing through yeah. which is about storytelling and traveling and i discovered it then i shared it with kwame so i would always listen on my way to work and then once i listened i would text him like wow this is so cool like i would just share with him then and he the would... topics were also relatable to us as yes. well so so we would like discuss that as well and it seems like a small thing but it really helped us to dream about things and discuss storytelling discuss our career so try to find things or media that you have in common like whether it's movies yeah. or netflix or podcast or articles so maybe a minor c in now on this conversation yeah definitely yeah. so it's like a the warmth of conversation is also really good yeah you try to find another c common ground <laughs> wow <laughs> to have a conversation on and then you take it from there and yeah. it's just something you you two have so it makes it feel cute <laughs> oh hell no i'm done okay I'm done with um, the C's. <laughs> and second one i had was um putting things put a dot on the horizon yeah. So for us, it was important to, even though it was far away, we would know like that is when we will see each other again. Yeah. So you're working towards something. Even if it's far away, you can save up to these months. And even also, it's also a reminder like, okay, then we will be together. So this too will pass. It yeah. was for us really a reminder like, okay, this is not a permanent state. We will be together at some point. So you also kind of, should I say, commit to a certain timeline of yes. making sure that you see each other again. Because if you leave it in, in like, oh, we're not sure, we're not sure, that is not really motivating. Yes. So you, you need some kind of commitment as well to a certain timeline that you make sure that, yeah, okay, we're saving up for six months or whatever it is and making sure that one person will either come yeah. Either way, yeah. so that you see each other. So there's also that. Um, 
agreement and yeah. longing to see the person. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think a side effect of having to work towards a certain moment, then you're together for two, three, four weeks, depending on how much freedom you have, it, it comes with a lot of pressure. Because in those few weeks, you have to do everything. You have to enjoy together, you have to catch up, you have to cuddle, you have to fight, you have to communicate, you have to go on dates, you have to, you know, do it's a that. lot. Yeah, put all that in the space, in of, the space three of three weeks to a month at most. So it comes with a lot of expectations and pressure. And we also struggle with that in the past, that there was one visit when I came to Ghana and we're both looking forward to it, but Kwame wasn't really in a good place. Yeah. There was a lot of pressure on him from the work side of things, and he was really caught up in his head. Yeah. And he wasn't present. And what we did then, or what I decided that I needed a break because it was really getting to me. Not in a break from the relationship, break from the just situation. a peace of mind, just yeah. from the situation, because I wasn't sure how we're gonna kind of handle this because I'm here now, but you are not here. Presently. Yes. No, yeah. And I decided to go to an Airbnb for two days at the beach. Grammy was in Accra and it might work at work. And it might sound controversial because, well, you are, you want to be together because you've worked towards this for such a long time, but we needed to figure out how we can still make this trip a success yeah. without you know, losing each other in the process of that. So taking that space was actually really important because then it gave us time to just breathe apart from each other. Yeah. Yeah, so that you can actually see the situation from a wider view. Yeah. And also calm your spirits in, in, in like the process, which eventually made it easier going forward because when she got back from the trip, I also managed to get a day off and did I run away? I don't know if <laughs> we I ran, ran away. away. <laughs> yeah. And we went to um, Hillbury. Yeah, I think so. Just to have a day off together. Like just that rebellion of, you know, not seeing each other. Also, also being in the same country and still missing each other. And going out and having fun together and just chilling. It, it, was, it was really good. Yeah, and I think... Um what made it work was that we even got a comment from a friend about it like i got a question like why did you leave when you're finally together and that made me upset because i was worried but in the end we talked about it and we decided this was what this was what worked for us, us yeah and because i knew we were on the same page i could let that comment go so i really for me it's well, you have to make sure that you t it works for you too. Yeah. So, yeah. Always always make sure you're on the same page. Yes. About the things you do. So, even when the outside world is like, "Oh, why did you leave for two days while you're finally together?" Like you can just you know, we are cool. Yeah. So, we can manage <laughs> your facial expression when yeah. you're saying it. Um, so make it work for you guys and yeah. and Acknowledge your pressure and expectations and try to find your way around it. Um, and the final one. No, we have a few more. I think connected to this one, like do your own thing is find your own rhythm. Yeah. So I remember in the beginning, <laughs> Kwame was outside calling because there was no network in his previous house. Right? The, I mean, the network was terrible in terms of like, because we called via was. Yeah. And if I'm in the room, it was literally non-existent. So I was standing outside and standing outside also means that it's a lot of mosquitoes, you know, that you have to deal with and all that. But it's compromised because then, um, like we we're saying, the best way to actually connect was to hear each other's voice. The warmth of knowing that the person is saying this and not meaning something else was good. So even for 30 minutes or whatever it is, you stand outside or I stood outside get bitten get bitten by mosquitoes and still yeah. talked there's that compromise that you have to deal with yeah and i think for me the time difference and all and the how demanding Kramis work was i knew like we can't go after eight for yeah. example because then he would go rest and you know wind down and everything 
So it's also compromising, okay, what schedule is the other person on and how can we adapt to that? I think it's very important. And uh, another how is also, I know Kwame doesn't want to talk about this, but I, w I wanted to include this. So of course, when you're not physically together, it's difficult to be intimate or the intimate yeah, part of your relationship. Um, I think it's still important to share like the sexy side of your relationship. And I don't mean that you can figure out what that means for your own relationship. But for example, what I did is whenever I felt beautiful or I felt fierce, then I would just make a picture to also show that, you know, I'm also a sexy human being, like I'm your girlfriend and this is how I look today and I want you to see it. So define intimacy for yourself. Yes. <laughs> okay, I want to go uh, yeah, I've, yeah, I've got it just shot. So Thank you. Try to define it for yourself and also try to talk about it because it is part of your relationship. And if you're struggling with it, try to find a way together. I mean, you can, there are so many ways to connect digitally and still make it sexy. And yes, it's restricted, but look at what you can do. And yeah, make it sexy. It's possible. It's not easy, but it's possible. Yeah. And then my last um, part is do small things for each other. Um, I love writing, so I wrote Kwame a lot. Whenever I could get a chance, I would write in postcards or letters. And whenever somebody would come to Ghana, um, yeah, I would ask the person to bring it. Um, or oh, you send it through the embassy. Or I send it through the embassy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that was this, should be um, out there. Birthday that she sent me a box of memories and pictures and you know clues to do things and that's what she's really good at doing things with her hands and writing and all these things which i mean these sentimental things are they make it easier for you to also like miss the person and long for actually wanting to be together so these small things that you do for each other luckily for me i was on air so <laughs> yeah that was I, also I, I, would, yeah. I would do a lot of like even though people didn't know, Elaine inspired playlists. <laughs> and only her would know that like the whole yeah. session I was playing was songs that we knew or loved. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, people would still catch on and text messages would come in like, this one, dear, we know that you are missing somebody. Yeah, okay. But yeah. so these little things were some of the things that we would do for each other and try and keep things um, alive. Yeah, and I also think that, for example, when I sent the birthday box, I had like joy because of when I was putting it together, like what should I put in? It couldn't be too heavy, but I still wanted to do something, you know, what would remind him of us and his dreams and how we want to move forward. And also like it brings you into funny situations because I had to drive to Woorden to a stranger's house who would go to Ghana and then I would arrange that a friend of us would pick and the I box. I remember that birthday video. Oh my God. The and she I, danced. Oh, the, oh. Yes, I do crazy things. I did the birthday dance on Instagram. Like, I don't have, I have no shame when it comes to, like, love or, you know, showing. Yeah. And I think... I think that one was a bit too much for you, but I mean, <laughs> no, I also... No, it wasn't too much. Like, it was just funny. Yeah, That's I also all. enjoyed that video and I did it together with my sister. So it also isn't... When you are doing small things for each other, you also make it an experience. Yeah. You know, prepare it, have joy in preparing it. Like, you're nervous when he's going to open it, all these things. I think you even left the box on your bed or something. Like, the first thing in the morning, you would see the box yeah. where you could open it. Because I told him to wait till his birthday. So try to look at what you can do and then try to make the most of that. Yeah. And there are always ways of maybe sending flowers or cards or play a song, make a playlist. You used to make really nice playlists for my birthdays. So I don't know what happened to that. <laughs> you are here now. <laughs> we will dance. <laughs> so yeah, so all in all, it boils down to compromise, creativity, and then in your why, it's about communication and commitment. and commitment. Yeah. I think that's what we wanted to share. We would really love to hear your tips and tricks to long distance. Have you been in long distance? Are you currently in it? How are you managing? And um, I have to also say that these things, although they were in long distance relationships, apply to any relationship, whether you're together or not. 
there's the commitment, there's the compromise, there's Definitely. the communication, and there's the creativity because you always need to keep the spark alive. Maybe that's why we like traveling every now and then. Yeah. You know, doing things together. It's, it's important for us because that's how, I mean, it makes it feel new and fresh all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So let us know in the comment section. Comments. What you also do in, whether it's long distance relationship like we just discussed, or even in your normal relationships, what you do, we'd like to know about it. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, do that. We're not having these conversations. I post videos about things that I learned on the way of my free lots. And so, yeah, that's uh, it for this edition of the vlog. Yes. Yeah. We hope to catch you next time. Right? Yes. Bye-bye. See you. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what you always do. How long is it?